A week after DeepSeek R1 was announced by an underground Chinese AI lab called DeepSeek, the US stock market crashed so hard that there are headlines that goes 600 billion wiped off NVIDIA. And DeepSeek is a side project of a Chinese quant company. But there seems to be quite a lot of controversy that started to surround DeepSeek. And I just really want to address these three main points plus some more miscellaneous points. So this video will not be like my normal video. And instead, I'll be sharing some more critical insights with you. Before that, I highly suggest you to watch my last video so you would have a better idea of the key concepts that I'll discuss in this video. Okay, so the first main point I want to talk about is Alexander Wayne, the CEO of Scale AI, claims that DeepSeek has more GPUs than they claim to have, accusing them of having 50,000 NVIDIA H100s, which are some top tier GPUs, which would be an illegal amount for DeepSeek to have because of export control from the US. You know, the Chinese labs, uh, they have more H100s than than uh, people think, you know, the- And these are the highest powered NVIDIA chips that they were not supposed to have. Yes. The, my understanding is that is that DeepSeek has about 50,000 H100s, um, which they can't talk about, obviously, because it is against the export controls that the United States has put in place. And I think it is true that, you know, I think they have more chips than other people expect, but also on a go forward basis, they are going to be limited by the chip controls and the export controls that we have. In but how does he know the exact number 50,000? Because that's oddly specific. While this conclusion might have come from a misunderstood report by Dylan Patel, the founder of Semi Analysis, which is a highly trusted semiconductor supply chain consulting service. So in this tweet back in November, he said that DeepSeek had over 50,000 Hopper GPUs. And guess what? That's the exact exact number that Alexander mentioned. But the truth is, H800, which DeepC claims to have, is also a type of hopper GPU, with H800 just being a less performant version of H100. So due to US sanctions, the H100 is banned, but not H800s. And Alexander might have assumed hopper GPU is only referring to H100s, as H800s or even H20s that are also hopper are less known. So if all DeepC has is H800s, they did not violate anything at all, which is what what they exactly claim in the DeepSeek v3 paper. Nvidia even made an announcement that DeepSeek did not violate any export controls to obtain their compute. And to smuggle that many GPUs that are worth a few billion is impossible not to be noticed. As for the $6 million price tag DeepSeek R1 has, that people are throwing around the internet saying that they only use that amount to beat billion dollar AI models from OpenAI, or they lied about spending $6 million only to make themselves look good, well, here's a price breakdown. That $6 million price tag, more specifically, $5.576 million is a price for one single successful run for making DeepSeek V3. They did not say that is the total cost, and that is also not for for making DeepSeek R1. Watch my last video if you happen to see how exactly they are differ and how R1 is built on top of V3. This price excludes all other costs like experiment runs, data curation, researchers paycheck, or even the rent of their office. This is only the price of the GPUs if you rent them hourly at market rate, which they estimated to be $2 per hour. So instead of having 2,048 GPUs like DeepSeek, if you rented GPUs at the market rate, this would be your training cost. They even put it in US dollars to make it easier for us to understand. And they could have just said 2.788 million GPU hours, and all the technical people would understand the implications of that. But for everyone else that don't know what GPU hours is, this puts a better perspective to how much the training costs. But don't they have at least 50,000 GPUs? There's no way they would only use 2,000 of them. They must be lying. Well, no one would use all their GPUs they have for just one training run. They still have to serve their APIs. In comparison, Metal bought an additional 400k GPU in 2024 alone, but for a 405 billion parameters dense model, they only use 16,000 GPUs to train it. On the other hand, DeepSeek V3 is a mixture of experts model, and unlike dense models that have all their parameters active, only 5% of them are active at once. So it does kind of make sense to have at least 90% less GPUs to train. But if 6 million final training cost still doesn't convince you, well, the CEO of Anthropic stated that Plot 3.5 Sonnet used a few 
few 10 millions to chain to back up the fact that Deep Sea can potentially use only 6 million. As Sonnet is chained quite a while ago and doesn't have the same amount of efficiency that Deep Sea has. And if you still don't believe the number, this person, Eric Banag, estimated the cost that Deep Sea V3 would need given all the specs they stated in their paper. He states that the claims that Deep Sea trained a 671 billion parameter mixture of experts with 37 billion active parameters on 14.8 trillion tokens in 2.788 GPU hours to be very plausible. And this many GPU hours across 2048 HA100s represents about 1.8 months, which is in line with the claims in the paper two months. I'll leave the article down in the description because it's a lot of calculations, but all in all, by calculating the amount of tokens with respect to the MOE architecture and its model precision, it is completely practical to only spend an estimated $5.5 million market price on the best training run of DeepSeek V3. And the narrative that anybody with $5 million could have trained DeepSeek V3 is unrealistic. As for the cost for making R1 that is built on top of V3, DeepSeek did not share the details in the R1 paper, but its cost is definitely not that cheap either. However, Aranko Masazaki and LDJ made a pretty good estimate of R1 cost, and even put it side by side with other models' estimated cost, which as you can see, DeepSeek R1 is incredibly cost effective. Just like today's sponsor, Hostinger, that is super cost effective in helping you to deploy a website in minutes. So if you want to deploy DeepSeek for a business, Hostinger's VPS hosting provides you with dedicated resources such as CPU, RAM, and bandwidth, which is perfect for handling high traffic websites, running complex applications, or hosting any SaaS. Unlike shared hosting, VPS ensures your project runs with optimal performance and security, which is perfect for high traffic businesses that need more power and security than what the regular shared hosting can offer. With Hostinger, you would have root access, you can install software, customize configurations, and optimize your server environment. You can also easily upgrade your resources as your website or business grows with dedicated resources for faster operations and isolated environments for better protection. And right now, they are running an amazing New Year sale where you can get huge discounts on hosting plans with the highest up to 67% off for a two years deal. On top of that, you can get an additional 10% off with my code ByCloud with 24-7 support that is ready to assist you with the setup, troubleshooting, and server management needs. You can manage your VPS without needing deep technical knowledge, especially with how easy to use their web service is. So if you're a dev, business owner, or just someone who needs to run complex applications, definitely check out Hostinger using the link down in the description. And remember to get the 10% off with my code ByCloud in the checkout. And thank you, Hostinger, for sponsoring this video. But it is important to note that V3 is already a very good model that is near state of the art before R1 came out. And I've used a lot of V3 tokens before R1. So I am pretty confident about its performance, especially in the aspects of using it as a LLM as a judge, which was my major use case. It's just that R1 picked up the hype with it performing even better than ever. DFC researchers even manually wrote in low-level language to efficiently manage the GPU memory to ensure their performance is fully utilized. And this is not coincidence. Back in 2020, DeepSeek already has some cracked blogs on GPU memory allocation. So it is no surprise that they can serve incredibly cheap prices that is 27 times cheaper than OpenAI's 01, which R1 rivals with. So they don't even write in CUDA anymore for their GPU optimization because that is still too much abstraction. On top of that, Huawei's Ascent chip supports DeepSeek on day one with ports to easily switch from NVIDIA's CUDA into Huawei's CUNN. So with them not having the need of using NVIDIA specific libraries because they might as well write in assembly and with the potential of more export control where they can access less NVIDIA hardware, it is very likely that Chinese AI labs will potentially pivot to Chinese hardwares instead, not to mention their government or local hardware companies would make great incentives for them to switch hardwares even if it's not as powerful. The second main point I want to talk about is stolen data. Just listen to what the US AI and crypto czar, David Sachs, has to say. Is there IP theft here? Did they steal some of what they were able to scale up here from us? And do we need to close the doors on what we're doing in terms of uh, invention and technology? Well, it's it's possible. There's a there's a technique in AI called distillation, which you're going to hear a lot about, and it's when a one model learns from another model. Effectively, uh, what happens is that the student model asks the parent model a lot of questions, just like a human would learn. Uh, but AIs can do this, asking millions of questions, and they can essentially mimic the, the reasoning process that they learn from the parent model, and they can kind of suck the knowledge out of the parent model. And there's substantial evidence that what DeepSeek did here is they distilled 
the knowledge out of uh, OpenAI's models. And I don't think OpenAI is very happy about this. And I think one of the things you're gonna see over the next few months is uh, our leading AI companies taking steps to try and prevent distillation. And so we'll see if, uh, if, if the leading AI companies can prevent distillation by third-party companies, uh, that would definitely slow down some of these copycat models. With this interview hitting the mainstream media and with the reports of OpenAI telling the Financial Times they have evidence of DeepSeek violating OpenAI's terms with distillation, on top of all that, Alexander Wang made another take about DeepSeek saying that R1 did not disclose their data source for training the reasoning process from B3 to R1 and are using human labeled data. So by now you definitely have already watched my last video. Right, And you would understand that the reasoning capabilities in R1 is emerged naturally from reinforcement learning. And this is why R1 is so cool and revolutionary in a sense. So for the first 600k reasoning data, it is extracted from the reasoning model in experiment 2 that already finished its RL training. That reasoning data did not come from anywhere else. It is impossible to come from anywhere else. Because the only model that has better reasoning is OpenAI's O1 and they don't even show anyone the reasoning chain of thought behind O1. One. All we see is a downgraded summary. Then how is DeepSeek able to distill or steal the reasoning data from O1? You know, it just doesn't make sense. And if OpenAI is talking about distilling from pre-training data, like general text data, then that is fair game since OpenAI did not ask everyone's permission to train on the entire internet. So why can't DeepSeek train on the internet too? Here's also a brief explanation of what distillation is that is cut from my last video. Because distillation is when a smaller model is learning a bigger model model's output distribution, which in R1's case, the distilled RL knowledge is so good that it helps juice out a lot of valuable RL knowledge that the small model cannot achieve by itself. As for the rest 200k non-reasoning data, those are just synthesized from an older model, DeepSeek V2.5, that they have and with humans filtering its quality. The process of that is just like literally any other supervised fine-tuning data. So no, DeepSeek did not hide anything about where their 800k data came from, nor was it stolen from OpenAI, because as just practically impossible. The third main point I want to talk about is DeepSeek is not a side project. They have their own goals. For them, it is not China versus America. They want to bring the AI advancements to everyone, not just themselves. And about DeepSeek being a side project, first of all, they did not just wake up one day and decided to spend 5 million to flex on billion dollar companies. That is just impossible. They have insanely cracked researchers behind it. And even so, those researchers have gathered their experience through previous open source research, just like everybody else. It's Clearly standing on the shoulder of Giant, it is the early open source work of many others that might be from OpenAI, Google, or even many other individual contributors that made DeepSeek have this incredible breakthrough. And the same could be said about the first few breakthroughs in OpenAI. On the other hand, there's also a fact that they have been publishing some of the best research ever since late 2023. And the researchers have spent their time at DeepSeek polishing their work nonstop. R1 is built on V3, which is published in November, V3 is built on V2 published in May, plus DeepSeek Math that was published in February, V2 is built on DeepSeek MOE that was published in January. They have been doing the research over the past years, and R1 is their first big achievement that have realized all their research efforts with everything coming together perfectly. With DeepSeek CEO vision of open source being a badge of honor, that will also help bring scientific advances that will benefit all humanity and not just create shareholder values. It is low-key a blessed to everyone that there are still people with vision like this. This. So I don't really get the hate that they're getting because everyone's winning in this case. And ironically, OpenAI and Open Source Institute is trying its best right now to turn itself into a for-profit and a Chinese quant company is funding AI open source research free for everyone. With both of the company's mission being extremely similar, it is kind of obvious which one will truly help accelerate the field faster towards AGI and actually benefit all humanity instead of creating shareholder values. Well, there's also the argument that that DeepSeek is not truly releasing open source research because that will include training codes and training data. So calling them open source for releasing weights only is cringe. Shh, it's okay, it's okay. Shh, it's okay, it's okay. Sorry, I'm back. I had to put a crybaby to sleep. So when was the last time that anyone put out training codes and data for a large language model, let alone a state of the art? Yeah. Never. So if you know the difference between open source and open weights, that's great. But you don't have to be a party pooper going around correcting people. Oh, that is technically not open source because they only released weights. Like who gives a flying fuck?
On to the miscellaneous points. China will steal your data, so don't use DeepSeek. Then use the DeepSeek models that are hosted in the regional servers that you trust if you are worried. There are a lot of companies that are currently hosting them, or you can just use a distilled version of DeepSeek and run it locally. The models that you can run locally are bad. Well, that's a given, I guess, because that's smaller models. Or you can check out this guy's $6,000 rig just to run the full DeepSeek model. The only downside is that it is kind of slow at generating. It is censored, so it is bad. Well, it's open source, so so you can use a version that is not censored that's uploaded onto Hugging Face or find yourself a provider that serves the uncensored version. Why is DeepSeek the one that gains this insane popularity? Well, the narrative is probably the easiest to spread. A Chinese quant site project beats billion dollar OpenAI, an underdog beating the status quo, a free model that is better than OpenAI's $200 a month model. Those are some really convenient headlines to make it pop off, to be honest. Did they plan to crash the market because they are a quant firm? Conspiracy can stay as conspiracy, I guess. But they proved that even without the best hardware, they can still do some of the best research, which got those financial analysts questioning the worth of NVIDIA GPUs. Why is RL suddenly working after all these years? Well, RL has always worked. Before Transformers became the thing, RL was literally under the biggest spotlight, with AlphaGo winning against the Go champion to a professional gaming team being beaten by a team of RL-based AI agents. It is only our attention got distracted by Transformers Transformers that made RL seems like coming out of nowhere. But the data used to train LLMs have gotten better over the years. People got better at curating data, generating data, and the internet basically talks about these LLMs kind of slowly making the data more robust and directly. So the base models got even stronger to finally bring out RL's full potential. The Go Andre Carpathy himself also wrote an explanation on why RL works. I highly recommend you to give it a full read. But to summarize, there are two parts to the learning problem. First is imitation learning, where you watch and repeat, which is kind of like pre-training and supervised fine-tuning for LLMs. Then there is the second part, trial and error learning, like how babies learn to walk, they have to trial and error. And this is done through reinforcement learning that the model just repeatedly tries something until it gets it right. For the first type of learning, model can just imitate us, but for the second part, humans would never know how to correctly annotate these kinds of underlying reasoning strategies and what they should even look like. The process has to be discovered naturally during reinforcement learning to be empirically and statistically useful. And this is what makes RL incredibly powerful when the learning agent is really strong, aka a good base model like V3, to interact with the environment. So why can't other AI companies just copy DeepSeek? Well, they are probably working on it right now. And there are a lot of small experiments that prove the DeepSeek method works. So it's just a matter of time that people is going to come up with something even better. And since it is open source, the idea is iterated and discussed all over the world, even if it's behind closed doors. And that increases the chance of someone coming up with something even better. And that is the beauty of open source, as it drives competition and innovation. And everyone can learn. I think the US AI labs actually have a lot under their sleeves too. Like I think Meta have been really conservative about pushing their adventurous research. So maybe we'll see some insane models released from them this year. I'll probably cover these papers in a future video, so stay tuned. And is this the real DeepSeek CEO? No, they only have one official Twitter account and this account is impersonating. So yeah, that's it for this video. Sorry, it's not like your usual video. So let me know down in comments if you like this format or not. If you want to keep up with the latest cutting edge research, definitely check out my newsletter where I share the latest and the juiciest research papers that I might not have time to cover in videos. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.